Okay, so uh, you would have hopefully uh, watched that first episode and that got us to effectively here. The, all I've done between now and then is I've copied and pasted from the internet just a handful of album covers because we're going to move into our album cover design now. Uh, so that's just a simple uh, case of clicking copy and pasting it in. Uh, you will need to attribute the original artists. Um, otherwise, you could create little samples of your own of album covers. It's entirely up to you, but um, yeah, let's uh, let's set this up. Now, the first thing I've done here is you will have noticed that you can set these to all be the same distance away. So as you kind of click, you get these little purple sort of hovers. Um, and then you can align them all using these aligns. So that's similar to most of the Adobe products. Just click that align and it'll make them all squared off. Um, you might want to grab that one and use your little smart tool to make sure that it's all in alignment there. So what we're going to do is imagine that now you've signed in, we're going to drag this over here. Um, so just duplicating that again with the Alt button. Now let's, uh, let's start by using our little sort of creator tools to create perhaps um, some play pause buttons, which can sit at the bottom uh, and perhaps a bit of a menu up the top. So before we do that, I might, with this black, I feel, you know, it looks a little bit bland. What if we wanted to make that a, a gradient? So let's click on this one. I'm going to right click and I'm gonna go edit. And over here, it's a solid color. So if I was to edit that, of course you would get your, it edits every single thing. Uh, you can change that to gradient as well. So I'm gonna go radial gradient. Um, and similar to the color picker in um, your Adobe suites, you can basically just grab, um, what's that? Maybe something like that. Can we delete that? No, we're not allowed to delete that. So we might just have to get this, maybe make that something like that, click that, maybe make it black, drag that out of the way, um, maybe make that a bit lighter. So now you can see that you've created sort of little bit more interest, um, like nice little black gradient there. Uh, you could perhaps change that to, if we were to edit that, you could change that to perhaps even a linear gradient as well. Uh, that might look a little nicer. So just a very, very subtle gradient, just to give it a bit of movement, I suppose. All right, so let's get started. So we want to um, create some little tabs up the top here. So I might just uh, one, I'm going to alt and drag that one, two, I'm going to select both of these, alt and drag that. And I'm going to select all of it and then just drag that across. Uh, so that's just sort of got my responsive little resize going there. I'm going to select all of these, remove the fill, uh, and then perhaps just give them a gradient as well. So you've sort of set up these little tabs, which can sit up the top. I don't really like how they're, uh, Sort of that far apart so I might just grab these shrink them all in and then turn off my little responsive resize and then just drag that so that they just got these nice little uh, little bottom bits there and I might do exactly the same for this uh, for a bottom bar which is going to have our plus so just going to rotate that uh, sorry which is going to have our, our play and stop tools so oh no maybe rotate that back there we go, that looks kind of nice like that. Um, actually, I might even prefer, what if this was rotated? No, nah, it doesn't really work, I like it that way. All right, so let's create a bit of a um, some home buttons. Uh, so let's, um, yeah, just using some basics. As I said before, like if you wanted to do a, um, sort of a more sophisticated symbol library, you'd probably want to be doing that in Illustrator. Um, so, but for the, mo for the moment, I'm just going to, oh, what, what are we doing? Turning it off, I'm going to grab that. And then I might make this sort of a gray, maybe slot that there. So that could be my home button. Um, yeah, you may even want to, um, uh, now let's just keep it like that for now. So you can have your home. You might have uh, perhaps another button for 
albums and create your own little sort of symbol there, whatever you wanted to do. Um, create another button for perhaps songs, you know, perhaps, uh, yeah, you could grab that, make that a little, um, a little, what's it called? Like a treble, uh, clef. Yeah. This is why I'm not a music teacher. Um, let's zoom in a bit. Uh, like so. Uh, and then, um, yeah, I don't know, maybe just like a, a second one or something like that. All right, so that's going to be perhaps your buttons, which are going to get you uh, up and around. Um, you can save these as components as well if you want. So little one, two, and that way you can kind of slot them in whenever you want. Three and four. All right, now let's set up uh, some play buttons too. So we could perhaps do some little circles down here, or maybe like a big central circle. We could make that a gradient. I'm happy to give that a bit of an outline. Uh, setting that up, rotating that. Um, yeah, something like that I think looks pretty good. Uh, so I'm just going to fast forward through the next bit just as I um, just as I kind of do these final tweaks. Uh, okay, so that's got us a, uh, we've got a nice little bunch of tabs up here and we've got our little uh, little button there. Um, you could center that, so see how that's uh, all nice and centered. So what we might do from here is let's make these components as well. My play button, my back button, and you could list these, uh, that might be a good idea. Um, yeah. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is let's zoom into this and let's create some toggle state. So that's what happens when you've actually tapped on the button. So that's over here. So you've got your default state. You click, click the little plus button and you can click on a toggle state. So now once we click on this, you can go in and perhaps rotate this around. So now if we click on this, you'll have your default state and then your toggle state. So you can kind of, we've just sort of changed that so it looks like you're pushing the button in. Uh, we could probably do the same for the others if you if we wanted, but let's not bother for now. All right, so now we've got our little albums. So you've clicked on this. Um, you want your albums. So let's just uh, turn off responsive resize here. We'll shrink these down. And you want to be able to basically have your albums up here, but being able to pan across. So you want to be able to sort of swipe them uh, left to right. So in order to do that, we're going to click on this little fancy button here called scroll groups. Now, I'll show you because we're starting to move into interactivity here. I'm going to show you what happens when you click play. So you'll click on this, you'll click the play button, and now you can see that you can scroll sideways through. So you imagine how you'd be able to do that on your app. Uh, on your phone and you can also kind of click the play button and you can see how that sort of uh, responds to your clicking. So this is when we start moving into that kind of cool interactive kind of zone. Uh, so yeah, you can click on this, you could perhaps click albums. I always spell albums with an N. Um, I don't know whether it was ever a thing, but uh, yeah, but nobody else does, so I'll stop it. Um, so yeah, we can click that over here. With our little scroll groups, we can sort of set that to go all the way to the end. Now what we want to do is perhaps we want to have um, drag and drop this, and perhaps we could have playlists. So we're just duplicating that now. Now that text is looking probably a little bit big and chunky. If we went to this size, it's all looking, all looking quite chunky. So you may want to go ahead and yeah, perhaps edit this. I don't know whether that's actually going to change it all the way around. Yeah, there you go, it does. So yeah, so you can click on that, edit that and say, yeah, you know, maybe that's a little less chunky. Uh, oh, it's changed my little audio mate there. I suppose that's something to be careful of when you're setting up templates that changes that you think are small might actually go ahead and change all the way around. 
So with this one, um, we want this to stay in this fixed position. So we're just going to click this fixed position when scrolling. Uh, and maybe we might do the same for this top bit as well. So that means that when we start scrolling down, because I'm going to add a few more down here, these are just going to stay in the spot. So let's click on this and we're going to resize our artboard. Now, as you can see, when we resize, you can see this is called the fold line. Um, so that's basically where the where the vision stops. I'm going to go on that one. I want to set it behind. So I'm going to go send to back. Um, and this one might be perhaps genres. Uh, you're going to need to send all of these to the back, send to the back, send to the back. Otherwise, they're going to slot in front of your little um, controls. And then maybe a, um, you know, perhaps a favorites or something like that. So it's starting to look a bit funky because um, this is sort of in the way. But hopefully, uh, when we click the play button, hopefully you'll be able to see that you can pan up and down through your through your thing. These all stay in the place. And with each of these, you can kind of scroll across. So hopefully you're starting to see um, what that's looking like and how that's translating into a design. So you've got your little hover states. You can move in and out. Next lesson, we're going to talk about connecting this into a prototype. So we're going to create our final little screen, which is going to be our album with the library of songs. Uh, we're going to learn a little bit about the repeat um, repeat layout feature, which is a really cool feature. Uh, and then we're just going to do some final tidbits. So look forward to that uh, and enjoy uh, experimenting with this uh, with what you've learned here.